Hey everyone, I'm Noren Queen Alexis and welcome back to the channel. Today we are continuing our overview, our beginner's guide to Warhammer 40k series. In this series we will be talking about the battle strategies, the lore, and what units to buy for your Warhammer 40k army if you are brand new to the series. And we are going to be doing this on every single army in the game currently. This way, you don't make the wrong choice when buying your first army like I did, where I bought Space Marines without any real knowledge on what Chaos Space Marines were. Preferably, I would have gone with them, but I digress. That is why I am making this series. So, in this, we're going to be briefly talking about the lore, their tactics, and their and what to buy under $100. With that said, today we are going to be talking about the Astra Militarum, the Imperial Guard, the normal dudes in space fighting horrific nightmares. The Imperial Guard first started out all the way back in the way before the Crusade was even started with the Sola Exilia, which was essentially what they are today, but more advanced. That's pretty much the cut and dry of it. For regard, their tactics didn't really change over 10,000 years. Because hey, you know what works, works. Who would have guessed? The Imperial Guard favored long-range combat over close-range combat, but if worse comes to worse, they affix bayonets and get right into, the punt, right into the meaty bits of the enemy. Their lore depends on their chapter themselves or their company themselves, where you have Cadians or Vestorians or Valhallans or Chemdogs or Catachans. There is a plethora of different guardsmen. If you can think it, chances are there is a guardsman for it. The guardsmen make up your standard military of the 21st century slash World War I, World War II-esque in the year 40,000. Their tanks look a little bit silly, but are fully functional and fully ready for war. And if they simply can't beat it with guns, They'll just bring more guns until they do beat it. Currently, as it stands right now, I will talk about the Cadians. When they were defending the Cadian Gate, which is the planet system uh, out right outside the uh, Eye of Terror, which is a tear into the nightmarish realm called the Warp. In the Warp, thoughts are made manifest. Your worst fears are there, but also your greatest prides and pleasures can also be there. But it's more malicious than it is good, or so it seems sometimes. From there, the Chaos Space Marines and Demons roam. And when they came out, Cadia, after fighting 13 great wars, in fact, they actually only fought like six, but I digress. After fighting a marathon of a war, they were eventually defeated when Abaddon threw his broken down Blackstone Fortress into the planet and broke Cadia. But this did not stop the guardsmen. They held fast, stayed strong, Cadia stands, and they fought and died and fought and died until the Imperium eventually pushed back the Chaos Force, with them being the bulwark of the entirety of the Imperium, fighting on millions of worlds, usually without reinforcements. The Imperial Guard are a devastating combat force. They are well-disciplined, well-trained, and well-supplied, though the common belief is that they're not. And this is where a lot of people like to make the jokes about them. But I digress. Let's get into the tactics of the Imperial Guard. Without question, they favor long-range combat, being that with their tanks or their infantrymen. They prefer hitting enemies and weakening enemies so that their battle tanks can finish them off or vice versa. They use a plethora of different types of tank, including artillery tanks, battle tanks, and even AA tanks to deliver death to their foes. Their weapons range from laser to more laser to plasma to a bigger laser. And if a laser doesn't work, they simply shoot a giant missile at it. And if that doesn't work, they fire a battle cannon at that. And if that doesn't work, they continue doing it until it does. They're not insane, they're effective. <laughs> so, 
When it comes down to it, you want to get strategic positions with your guardsmen. You want to hide them. You want to stay in cover as much as possible while protecting your battle tanks. Your battle tanks are going to do a, the majority of the work for your force itself, but never count out the lonely guardsmen who can kill pretty much anything in this game with a well-positioned last blast. Now, that all being said, where should you start with collecting the Cadians since there is a lot of them? Well, as, although it may seem like you want one of the big tanks right away, the Shadow Sword being the best, which I immediately click the wrong one, the Shadow Sword being the best, you actually want to take a look at what they have to offer. And what they have to offer is Commissars, you want to skip those, they're garbage, Command Squads, which are pretty decent, Tempestus Scions, which are actually pretty good themselves, but you want to look into, boop -da -boop -da -boop. actually I think it's like the first choice, yep, their Star Collecting. Their Star Collecting comes with an Infantry Squad, um, actually let's just click on it. Their Star Collecting comes with an Infantry Squad, it comes with a Commissar, and it comes with a Battle Tank. Personally, I wouldn't run a Commissar as they don't think that they are worth their points, even though I have five to my name for absolutely no reason. So with the Commissar himself, I would change out his weapon loadout to, I would cut off the uh, Power Sword and replace that with a Chain Sword, and I'd replace his Bolt Pistol by cutting it with a Laz Pistol and running him as a Company Commander versus a Commissar. This is a very simple conversion and a very effective conversion because company commanders just do better and are lower points than the commissar himself or herself, as I have a few female commissars. So with the star collecting, you get a battle tank, an infantry squad, and this guy, but I would only suggest picking up one of the star collectings when you're first starting out. In fact, I actually think you can collect once you buy that, you can actually buy five more Guardsmen for under $100. Once I can find it, once I can find them, there's a lot to choose from. Yes, you can actually get five more additional Cadians for $100. And this will get you a, a Cadian Force, which is very effective. Cadians and Catachans tend to be... Cadian, Catachans, and Vestroians, or Steel Legion. I forget which ones. The tank ones tend to be the three best that I go for. I typically go with Cadians because Cadia stands. And I can't, for the life of me, choose anything else aside from the Hollands, but that's just me. After you buy your Star Collecting, the thing that I would suggest that you buy next would probably be maxing out your tanks or your infantry. And I know that seems weird, but let's take a look at something really quickly. Let us scroll down and pass it because I am looking for this thing, the $55 uh, Lehman Russ. I would get a Lehman Russ Punisher and use that as your command tank for your second HQ. Then from there, I would probably collect some heavy weapon teams once I can find them. I'm gonna keep passing them and I do apologize about this. I would get a Cadian Heavy Weapon Team. Now, the cool thing about the Cadian Heavy Weapon Team is if you buy this, some extra bases, and just those five Guardsmen, you can actually make almost all of these heavy weapons with some proper conversions. So one of the things that I would suggest that you pick up is a little bit of cork, as well as some, you know, some extra bits here and there, which you can go down to your local hobby shop run into a person and just say, hey, do you have some extra bits that I can use, like an orc torso, a claw, or a thing, just to make a slight barricade so that you can put the heavy weapon on top of. This way, you can save a ton of money by getting all of the options from the heavy weapon box, which the heavy weapon box comes with uh, three to four options, I believe. I believe it's four options. I think it's auto cannon, las cannon, mortar, and heavy bolter. And you can get all of those out of one box. I actually think you can get, I think it comes with three of each, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so it contains three heavy weapon teams, each consisting of a gunner, a loader, including the options to equip the team with any of the following, last cannon, heavy, bolter, missile launcher, auto cannon, or mortar. 
So with one heavy weapon team, you get a ton of stuff. So I would suggest that you buy two heavy weapon teams, a couple more guardsmen. If you want, just buy a uh, guardsman squad for the $35, I think it is. Yes, it is. Buy a guardsman squad. And then from there, you have all of your heavy weapons. You have all of your infantry. You have one battle tank. Buy a second battle tank. And from there, you're really set to go with whatever tank that you want. Just remember the golden rule of 40k, which is take three of everything. Or take three of something if it's good. So if you have a Lehman Russ, we're just going to say that this is the typical Lehman Russ. Take three Lehman Russes. Triples are better. If you take a heavy weapon team, take three heavy weapon teams. Three is better. And keep in mind that every single one of your squads, your 10-man squads, can actually include a heavy weapon, or which you can use to make a mortar and keep them hidden from the opponent. This will allow your force to be devastating and stay out of danger all at once. So I hope that this wasn't too much information thrown at you all at once. If you have any questions, please put them in the comment section down below. Also, while you're down there, make sure to check out the links in the description down below. There you can find me on all sorts of social media. But before I get into that, be sure to comment your questions about either tactics, painting, building, or anything that you have, even if it is list building advice in the comment section down below. This way I can answer them all in a follow-up video to this after I have finished going through all of the armies. This way I can best help you guys out. That is my goal with this video series. Now I will do my useless plugs. Be sure to check out all the links in the description down below. There you can find me on all sorts of social media, including Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, and Patreon. Patreon goes a long way to helping out the channel. It keeps my lights on and my belly fed, and I like ice cream and iced tea and junk food. Uh, probably shouldn't be eating all of that. Anyway, guys, I'm Norn Queen Alexis. I love you guys. Bye.